for the next lecture here, I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint just to bring up some of the things we talked about in the last video, and we'll finish that part of the discussion. So as we mentioned in the previous lecture, we, if we look at uh, these two um, orbitals over here, or sub, um, sub levels, so we have an S and a P, one of the P's. Remember, there's like three different uh, P orbitals that you can have. Uh, if these two blend together to make equal locations where electrons can be bonded, oops, uh, then you're going to have what's called an SP. Not SP2 or 3, but SP. Here's location 1, here's location 2. And these were uh, locations where electrons are found. That's what we're talking about, where the electrons are found. Uh, and these are hybridized or equal. And here's an example. So location number 1, location number 2 where you have these two guys, the S and one of the P's, have hybridized together to give two locations. This gets into a deeper conversation, but here we are for the second option. You have two of the P's and the, the S. They're different, they look different, but if they blend together, we can get three identical locations for electrons to bond together. So again, as far as the shape goes, uh, we don't really have a good uh, shape on there that actually goes into it. But that is three locations, SP2. If we blend all three of the P's with that S, we can get four locations. And there it is. So SP3. Total of four locations, so three, S, three P's and the one S coming together. All right, the other part of the conversation we talked about was the whole sigma and pi bonds. Kind of confusing. Again, every time you have a bond, head to head, here's atom number one, here's atom number two, when they come together, you're going to have a sigma bond every single time. But when you have a double bond, you're going to have one of these uh, locations in which you have an unhybridized pair above, going perpendicular to the plane on both of these atoms that are going to be pulled towards each other the positive nuclei and the negative electrons towards each other, and they will blend. And we'll kind of a visual of that. Well, this gives us like a stick drawing. So here's like a double bond. It's like, I don't see it. <laughs> this is a sigma and a pi bond coming together. And we have some visuals as I'm moving across here that gives a pretty good job. So again, here's those two different types of bonds. It's a double bond. Here's bond number one, sigma, between the carbon and the oxygen. The double bond, the extra second bond, is what's going above and below the plane. That is one bond, that pi bond. And this is where we have a triple bond. The purple one in the middle, that's the sigma. And there's one above and below, and there's one that kind of goes within the plane on the outside. That's the triple bond. Okay, that's uh, probably good enough. This kind of gets the idea of resonance structures in which you have these guys all blending together right there. So I'll give you like a benzene ring. Let's bounce over to the notes. So I'll pull that up for you right there and we'll knock these guys out. We've got a few of these to take a look at. Okay, first one we have on our list is number 25. It says, give the electron domain and molecular geometries of a molecule that has the following electron domains on its central atom. So we can have a huge, long molecule, and we always focus on one particular atom as a central atom. Uh, in this case, here we are, and you can use your notes for this. You have four bonding domains and no non-bonding domains. So we're going to do um, the electron domain and the molecular, based on these two things. So for total, that would mean it's tetrahedral for the electron domain geometry. And it would also still be tetrahedral for the molecular geometry, 4 and 0. Done with A. Let's do B. You have three bonding domains and two non-bonding domains, so five total 
If I take a look at my list, if I have five total, it would be trigonal by, whoop, 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 by pyramidal for the electron domain geometry. But specifically the shape, the molecular shape that I see having three bonded and two non-bonding, that will be T-shaped. Keeping this conversation going, five bonding and one non-bonding, six total. That's octahedral. And for the fact that it is five bonding and one non-bonding, hopefully you see this in your notes, that is square pyramidal. And the last one on there, four and two, again, is still a total of six, so octahedral. But in this case, it is going to be square planar. There you go. 25 is done. All right, so 29. I have to give you a couple little stick figures to work with here. Uh, the figure that follows shall, or shows, excuse me, ball and stick drawings of three possible shapes of AF3, just some made up shape, AF3 molecule. And here's our three shapes. Shape one, on the ends of each of these sticks, is another atom. That's one. There's two. Work with my drawing here a little bit. That's a short one going in the back. And there's another. So this is what you see. And three. This one goes up. This one goes that way. And this one goes that way. Okay. For each of the shape, give the electron domain geometry on which this molecular geometry is shaped. Okay, so I want the electron domain geometry for this one here. It's in a plane. There's three parts to it. There's no lone pairs. I'm going to call that one trigonal planar. So again, this one still has three, but as far as uh, give the electron domain geometry on which each of these is based. Okay, so this one here, I have three, but why are they all facing down? It's because there's another pair of electrons hanging out up here. So there's four locations, electron domains. Therefore, this one is tetrahedral. And this one has the three in this shape, which implies that there are two lone pairs of electrons hanging out over here. So five total. That one will be trigonal by pyramidal. Okay. Let's go over an answer. I have to flip my sheet over um, and answer, look at these other questions. For each of the shapes, how many non-bonding electron domains are there on the central item? Well, I'll write down one, two, three. And for the first one, we had zero. For the second one, one. And the third one, two. So zero, one, and two. Which of the following elements will lead to an AF3 molecule with the shapes um, of number two. So the shape that we saw of this one here. So something that's going to give us one lone pair of electrons hanging out there. Okay, so looking at this one here, I have this uh, lithium, which is not really going to work. It's going to be something ionic, so that's probably not going to be our best choice. Boron, boron is hanging out there um, with five electrons, and that one typically isn't going to give us that shape as well. Uh, nitrogen, that's interesting. So when nitrogen is going to combine um, and with three other parts, how many valence electrons does it have? It has five total, 
balance electrons. And when it bonds together to, for, to form with three other things, it's going to use three of them. Three other things. It's going to use three of its valence electrons and have two left over. So five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like nitrogen is going to work. Aluminum isn't going to work. It has three valence electrons, and they're just all going to bind up and no extras. Phosphorus, if you look at your periodic table, phosphorus is right below nitrogen. Therefore, it behaves just like nitrogen. And chlorine's not going to do it. It has seven. It's got valence electrons hanging out all over the place. So that's not going to be a choice. Those three guys are going to work. All right, C. Uh, which of the following elements are just C? Excuse me. Uh, D, name in element A essential atom that is expected to lead to the third choice, AF3 um, molecule. So giving us this shape here. So we need something that's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons hanging out there on the outside. So one, two, three, because you're sharing. And then you still have four others. So a total of seven valence electrons. So again, think of that. So who has seven valence electrons out of, whoops, out of these guys listed here? Well, no, 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 no. Yep, that one right there. So I need someone with seven valence electrons. And that's going to give us, whoops, <laughs> no I. Chlorine as our best choice, our only choice in this example. And that's it. That is uh, all the homework questions that I've listed for this particular chapter. You have the other ones listed here at the bottom. Done.